Hello, welcome to another video. Today we are going to remove and replace the thermal paste on our Acer Aspire 5 slim laptop. Okay, so here's what we're going to need. We're going to need our isopropyl alcohol, our paper towel, a couple Q-tips or cotton swabs, a PH1 screwdriver is what I'm using to uh, open up the laptop. We got our plastic prying tools or pry tools. And we have our MX4 thermal compound. My first time using this stuff. So it's going to be interesting. So we just got to flip over our laptop and remove the 10 screws. Oh, by the way, uh, this video was actually requested by uh, someone in their comments, so shout out to that person. Um, I kind of forgot. I wasn't planning on doing this video until a few weeks later, but they, they were asking about it. They did. They were hoping for another type of a thermal compound, some high-performance stuff, but um, it would have taken a couple of weeks to to order it. So they were fine with me using this MX4 thermal compound. So I'm just uh, loosening up the screws and we are going to remove them. Easy peasy. 10 screws all the same size. So you don't have to worry about mixing up the screws for this particular laptop model. Now we got our plastic prying tools and we're just going to go around a couple times here. We have opened up this laptop before. I think this is like the fourth or fifth time we are opening up this laptop. Um, so you can kind of tell there at the edges. So this time I was able to actually do it really, really fast. And I was able to get it open quick just because I knew what to expect. So it's a very fun project. You know, I do hope to replace Thermal Place on the other laptops as well. You know, um, also I'm going to put up uh, some screenshots toward the end of the video about the results. So to be honest, I wasn't even sure, like, how do you measure thermal paste? Like, do we know if there's a difference or not? So what I did was um, core tab ADA64 statistics, you know, stress tests on that. Um, CPU benchmark tests like Cinebench, Geekbench Pro 5, and Userbench. So now I'm going to disconnect the battery. So I did a before and after, and I didn't do any modification. So like right after I applied the thermal place, booted it up and then start started running our benchmarks. So if you've seen my other videos, you probably know that I use, like to use the plastic prying tool to disconnect the battery. It's just easier for me. So this laptop, the great thing about this Acer is it's easier to disconnect. It's not too bad. So. Let me give you guys a close up of the heat sink. So it is numbered one, two, and three. So when we we remove the heat sink, we're just gonna go three, two, one to remove, and then when we put it back on after the new thermal paste, we're gonna go one, two, and three. I guess I think that makes the most sense logically. I think the reason for the number of the num why these screws are numbered is the order in which you want to tighten it so that the thermal paste spreads evenly. So easy peasy, just three screws, easy to remove. If you can see the numbers right here. So very cool, very nice. So let me just put these screws on the sides, on the side before we lose them. Th three screws to be exact. Now let us remove the Thermal paste. So I'm just using a cotton swab just to kind of loosen it up a little bit and then I'll use a paper towel. I mean, from what I can tell there, I think they used the perfect amount of thermal paste from the factory. Well, on the um, on the CPU itself, um, there's a little bit of extra on the side. But in my opinion, I think they did a great job. I mean, the only way to really find out is, you know, with the um, results, the benchmark results and the temperature results later. So the cool thing about uh, replacing a thermal paste on a CPU for laptops, so far I've seen them to be pretty small compared to desktop CPUs. 
so they're easy to clean and easier to um you know put new thermal paste on they're just tinier so i'm just using the q-tip again and just trying to clean off the sides here nothing fancy i have to say though thermal paste replacement is addictive it's like i just want to replace thermal paste on everything so i'm just using a paper towel just to kind of wipe it off Yeah, you don't necessarily have to use um, alcohol to remove thermal paste. I know they have a thermal paste removing so remover solution or some people like to use hydrogen peroxide or a bunch of other stuff. But for me, you know, the alcohol is just the easiest for me to get and find. You know, I'm glad that the stores have restocked them so they're easy to get now. Okay, looking good. So I'm showing you guys a close up. It actually says AMD Ryzen. So that's pretty awesome. I don't know if you guys can see that. Pretty nice. Nice and shiny. I think we are ready to apply some new MX4 thermal compound. Cool. Yeah, it's interesting with the three screws too. So let me just align this so it's easier for us to apply the thermal paste. Yeah, for the thermal paste, for the thermal paste, I think I'm just gonna stick with um, going with the P method. Apparently, is what it's called. Um, I don't like to use the spreader, but that's just me. It the it did come with a spreader though. I think it's called a spreader. But yeah, I just like to use the P method. Let's see if we can get it right the first time. I think that's a pretty good amount, especially for a CPU this size. I mean, this is just a hobby, so I think it's all about the results. So let me flip this over here, rotate it over there, okay. So let us put back the heat sink. See, it looks like a pretty standard um, setup here. The heat sink right next to the fan. So here we go. Let us screw in number one. And then I'm gonna go for number two. And number three. So yeah, I'm glad they have it numbered because you know not all heat sinks you know have this numbering system, or like have you know have numbers on them. So easy peasy. Now we just got to reconnect the battery. Awesome. Now we can put back the bottom cover. It's gonna close it up a little bit. So everything went well, nothing too bad. So that was easier than I thought. Well, we have been getting a lot of practice, so we have been improving a lot. So this is probably my second laptop thermal paste replacement. And uh, this time I went with the good stuff. MX4 apparently is uh, one of the most popular um, thermal compounds around I guess and they got good reviews too I do like the Best Buy thermal paste I still have some and I know it's been discontinued so I might just use the Best Buy thermal paste on um, you know the older reused optiplexes that we have to unbox so there's a few left you know and then I do want to upgrade you know play around with more graphics card upgrades and stuff like that so it's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, we've been held up with a lot of uh, video game tests. So I know people are probably going to ask more video game tests on this laptop as well. So it's pretty interesting. So once we put back the 10 screws here, we are good to go. We can flip it over.
All right, so let us take a look at the results. So core temp, minimum temperature went lower, 39 degrees, and max is lower too at 72. What's weird is the frequency. The load is higher, but the frequency is lower for some reason. So I'm not too sure about that. But the good thing is the temperature went lower, so that's what I was going for. And then we have our um, ADA64 test. So this is kind of weird because I tested this software on my other computer, and it was showing me like core zero, core one, core two and core three. This one shows CPU dio temperature, which is, which actually resulted in a lower minimum and a lower maximum as well. And then Cinebench actually performed better. So I didn't do anything new. Everything was installed. So after I replaced the thermal paste, booted this thing up and then ran Cinebench 20 and the score improved. Even user bench improved, not by a lot, about 3.8% improvement there, but I'm just surprised here. And even Geekbench Pro 5 um, score improved, so I guess the thermal paste did work. I'm just basing it off the evidence, I guess. But this was a pretty interesting test, and uh, I'm actually really impressed with this MX4 thermal compound. I don't know if my testing is flawed, so I just ran a bunch of tests, and it worked. So I'm assuming the thermal paste worked, right? I mean, I just put it in right after. So... I'm pretty impressed with this MX4. In the future, I'll see if I can order some like high performance crazy stuff and we are going to give that a shot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Take it easy.